Hi, I'm Mike Rooney, coastal painter from North Carolina. I'd like to get on part three of this uh, Lost and Found Edges series that I'm doing. In the first two, uh, I covered the importance of them, why do you have lost and found edges, and then in number two, I showed you how to do a, a lost edge. How do you smear the edge and lose the edge by melding the two together? You lose the edge when they kind of go get smushed into each other. Now, why do you, uh, how do you get a found edge, and why would you use a found edge? When do you want them to be very distinct and very sharp? When do you want that? I'll show you. You want that around your focal point, because that's where the eye goes. When the eye looks at a painting, it goes for all the hard edges first. So imagine the whole painting's a hard edge, everything's a hard edge. It has nowhere to really land to go to, the go, go to the focal point. But if you'll blur the edges away from the focal point, the eye will go directly to where you, as the artist, have designed their eye to go. We are actually leading people around to where we want them to be in the painting. So let's, let's do a lost and found little miniature painting up here, and I'll show you the importance. So let's uh, use values that are very easy to see the difference in. Let's draw a little uh, scene up here with some blue paint. And let's just say that this is our little painting. And let's say, I don't know, let's say it's a, a barn. Let's do a little barn, a little building here. All right, and we got some mountains in the back. Okay. And then some grass here, and then a little smokestack up here. All right, and then a little, let's say a little shadow behind the house, okay? So let's do some values. Uh, let's make the, uh, let's make the grass behind here. Let's lighten it up and do the side of the house. Okay, let's make the uh, trees in the back green. Okay, that's cool. You know, just real quick. Green for that. Let's make the green grass. Let's make it yellow in the front. Okay, now really I've got all hard edges here because every edge you can see. I'm, I'm running it right up. I'm not blending any of them or doing any of that kind of stuff. The house is white. Let's do a little light blue under the house. Um, let's just make a little shadow under the house. Paint's kind of dirty so it doesn't matter. But anyway, you get the idea. There's a little house and the roof. Let's make it medium gray. All right, so now, as you can see, all the edges are pretty hard, aren't they? Everything looks like it could be cut out so far. All right, let's do a little window. There's a little window. There's a little window. And let's put a little door or a little window on this side. All right, now let's do the blue sky. And there's the smokestack. Okay, let's do a light blue sky. So we're going to take white and blue and make a nice light blue sky. All right, now I want you to watch where the edge is, where I keep them soft and where I keep them hard. Okay, this is a light blue sky behind the house. Okay, let's not let that get too dark. We want that sky nice and light. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go get the... How to Master and Understand Values DVD that I did. And you can see a nice long explanation of how to do that. Okay, so there, there we have a basic little painting where everything is hard-edged right now. Now what you want to do is you want people to look right in this area right here because this is some of the lightest lights and darkest darks are right in here. So let's let this part of the painting be very, very sharp-edged and we're going to blur out everything else. Let's put a little, that's going to look cool when I make a little, look at that little chimney, little shadow off that, off that chimney. Ooh, that's pretty right there. All right, let's make that window a little bit darker. That'll look good too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep all the edges nice and sharp on the house because that's where I want you to look. All right, so there, that one's sharp, that one's sharp. All right, that one's pretty sharp. Let's make that really white right there. Okay, really white, because I want all the edges really sharp right in this corner right here. Now, everything else, I'm going to blur. Now, watch how I do it. I just take a clean brush. I just cleaned my brush out, get it nice and clean, and I just run the brush right along the edge of both the blue 
and the green and I just smush the blue into the green and I bring the green up into the blue so that it fades right on that line. Now look how that line got really, really nice and soft. I just take the blue, push it into the green, push the green into the blue. Clean your brush off, grab some of this blue, pull it down into the green. Look how nice and soft that edge is right there. Take this, clean it again, just touch it, run them together. I can even soften this edge right here just by running a clean brush right along the edge of all the shapes except for those right there where it's nice and tight. Now you can go like this, you can do it like a sawtooth like I showed you on the first one. That's a nice little sawtooth. Now look how everything blurs except the hard lines right there. Everything in this little area here is really, really harsh and really, really tight. That's called a found edge. If you lose it, it's a lost edge. Now there's the shadow on the house. See how you look right here? Because that's where all the hard edges are. So that's the importance of a lost and found edge. If you'd like to see more about me or in any of my classes, go to mikerooneystudios.blogspot.com.